Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to explain why a bigger furnace is not necessarily better. So I'm bringing up this topic because it's getting cold outside here in Minnesota, and this is when people start to think about replacing their furnace, getting something maybe a little bit more efficient, something that might heat their house better. I use that term because I actually had a furnace salesman come to my house and try to tell me that I had a bad air conditioner and a bad furnace, which was not true. That's besides the point, but he wanted to sell me a new furnace and he wanted to give me a larger one. My existing furnace was 80,000 BTUs and he was trying to sell me a 90,000 BTU furnace. And you know, I just, I played the fool. He didn't know I was a home inspector or that I knew anything about this. I just said, gee, why would I want to go with a bigger furnace? And he said, well, because it'll heat your house better. <laughs> and I just kind of, I, I smiled inside. I said, oh, okay, thank you. I, I was very polite. I didn't correct him. But in reality, a larger furnace is not going to heat your house better. If you have a perfectly sized furnace, it means that your furnace is gonna run all day long on the very coldest day of the year. When it is an extreme temperature, it's an unusually cold weather for your climate, like the 1% of the time in the dead of winter, your furnace is gonna run all day, it's not gonna shut off, and it's not going to keep up. It's actually going to get a little bit cooler in your house than you would like it to be. Let's say you set your thermostat for 70 degrees, it might only keep your house at 68 or 69 degrees for a very small window of time during the winter, less than a day. So that's, that's a perfectly designed furnace. Now, most of the time that doesn't happen. Just about all of the furnaces out there we see are oversized. Now, if a furnace is undersized, the problem is that it may happen more than 1% of the time. Your furnace is not going to keep up. You're gonna to have to put on an extra sweater or two, but it doesn't mean that your furnace is gonna work any harder. Most furnaces only have one speed to start with. It's, they're typically going to be a single stage furnace. When it's on, it's running. It's like turning on a light bulb. And people think that if your furnace has to run for a long period of time, it's working harder. It's kind of like thinking if you leave your light bulb on all day, does it work harder? No, it's only got one speed. So it's, it's the same thing with most furnaces. I'm qualifying that because there are newer furnaces out there that will be dual stage, maybe even triple stage, maybe even multi-stage, where the furnace may kick on at 20% of its full capacity and continuously ramp up more and more and more. I'm not talking about those furnaces. Those are special. I'm talking about your traditional single stage furnaces. You turn that furnace on, it's got one speed, and it's just gonna run at that speed until the thermostat is satisfied. And if it never does satisfy the thermostat, it's just simply going to stay on, and this does not create additional wear and tear on your furnace. This is not a problem. The only problem you experience is that your house doesn't get quite as warm as you would like it to. But the big problem here is when people oversize furnaces, and again, that's most of the furnaces we see. Most of them out there are oversized. And the problem with this is that your thermostat is gonna call for heat, your furnace kicks on, it gets everything really warm very quickly, it satisfies your thermostat, it tells your, your thermostat, uh, we're good, the thermostat measures the temperature you want it to be, and then the furnace shuts back off. Now, you haven't given all of the stuff in your house sufficient time to absorb all of that heat, things like your walls, your flooring, your cabinets, all that other stuff, that hasn't had enough time to absorb all of that heat in the air. So the air cools down fairly quickly again. It call, your thermostat calls for heat, your furnace kicks back on again. And it's constantly in this cycle of fire up super hot, turn back off, fire on, turn back off. It goes back and forth constantly. And this is what creates a lot of wear and tear on your furnace. Think of it as all city miles for a vehicle. You're not having any highway miles. We, everybody knows that analogy, right? 
It's the turning on and turning off that creates wear and tear on your furnace. That metal in the heat exchanger is gonna be expanding as it gets warm, it'll contract as it cools down, and this constantly happens. And furthermore, you may actually have the furnace malfunctioning if it's too oversized, where the furnace will get too hot and its own internal safety sensor will shut the furnace off before the thermostat is even satisfied. That's called short cycling. And there's, there's a number of reasons for that, but a, a common one would be an oversized furnace. So this is, a, this is kind of scratching the surface on what it means to have an undersized and a properly sized and an oversized furnace. The bottom line is that of these three cases, of course, having a properly sized furnace is the most desirable, but the least is having an oversized furnace. You do not want a bigger furnace than what your house is designed for. This will only lead to premature failure and excessive service calls for your furnace. That's all I've got on that topic. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.